Indonesia. It's the world's largest island country, consisting of over 17,000 islands and 270 million people. And yet, in all of that land and population, it's only ever produced one Formula One driver, a man named Rio Harianto. Harianto's F1 career was, on the surface of it, fairly unremarkable, not scoring a single point in his 12 races with Mana, although we have to bear in mind that he was racing for Mana, a team slow enough to class as a GP2 team for most races. Not to mention, Harianto's career was shorter lived than an iPhone battery. So we have to draw one of two conclusions. Either Harry Anto wasn't good enough for Formula 1, or it just treated him badly. After his brief campaign in F1, Harry Anto hasn't stopped racing, and therefore this begs the question, where is Rio Harry Anto now? As with all videos I make, I'm going to start off by taking a look at Harry Anto's junior career, so let's get stuck into it, shall we? He was born on the 22nd of January 1993 in Solo, Indonesia. He began his time in go-karts at the fairly old age of 12, winning his first two championships the following year in 2006, with the ROK Open and Formula 125 classes of the Asian Karting Open Championship. He carried this strong form into 2007 as well, finishing second in the Rotax Max Challenge Asia Series, which was enough for him to make the step into cars in 2008 with three junior Formula Series. Young Harry Anto took three wins across these series, picking up a highest championship finish of third in the Formula Asia 2.0 series. So all in all, his first ever year in cars signals to me that this guy could have had a great shot at becoming the first Indonesian F1 driver in the future. And, well, he did. For the most part, Harry Anto's 2009 season was a bit all over the place, with him dipping in and out of championships seemingly at will. So of course we couldn't expect him to deliver much of a result. That said, he did still achieve his first championship title in cars, with the Formula BMW Pacific Series, taking 11 wins from his 15 races. Admittedly, there was literally nobody of note in this series bar Harry Anto, but that's beside the point. Harry Anto finally made the step into relevancy in 2010, joining the GP3 Series with Mana Racing and becoming a test driver for Virgin. I guess Harry Anto wasn't good enough at testing, however, as he was let go by the Virgins in 2011, leaving him with even more time to focus on his own racing. Unfortunately, this extra time to himself didn't really help with his performances, when he again competed in all the rounds of the GP3 series, and while he did score four more points than in 2010, he finished seventh overall compared to fifth in 2010. That said, he still managed to pick up two race wins and four podiums in GP3, so it wasn't all bad, eh? As well as his time in GP3, Harry Anto also competed in the Auto GP series, one which is now known as Boss GP, otherwise known as the only series Mahave Ragunathan could win, so if Harry Anto finished anything other than first in the championship, we have cause for concern he finished 7th. Granted, there was some decent competition in this championship at the time, such as Fabio Onidi and Adrian Tambay- Nah, I, I haven't heard of either of these guys. Harry Anto was picked up by Marussia as a Formula 1 test driver in 2012, where he carried out his duties alongside his first ever season in GP2, racing with Carlin. Nowadays, Carlin are usually frontrunners in the F2 and F3 series, however, in 2012, they weren't so great. Sure, GP2 is supposed to be a spec series, but as I've made it abundantly clear in the past, you still need a good team to win. And, unfortunately for Harry Anto, he didn't have that luxury. With all that excuse making said and done, you'd probably expect me to tell you that Harry Anto didn't do very well in the championship and you'd be right. Even compared to his teammate Max Chilton, he didn't stack up that well, with Chilton finishing a respectable 4th overall and Harry Anto winding up in 14th. But hey, this was Harry Anto's first season in GP2, so he can't exactly jump to conclusions just yet. Plus, he did also become the first ever Indonesian to qualify for a super license that year, thanks to a test day in Silverstone with Marussia, so that was an achievement. I know that a lot of the time I come across as quite negative in these videos, but I'm trying, at least in this one, to be a bit more lenient with how I judge drivers, especially given how many of you have warned me about the angry Indonesian fans which are apparently going to kill me if I say anything about their driver, which is fair enough, given the fact that the only other hope they have is a professional chicken connoisseur by the name of Sean Galea. Unfortunately, as nice as I'm trying to be here, there's no way I can describe Harry Anto's 2013 GP3 season as anything other than quite shit. That said, he was driving for the worst team on the grid and still managed to score a podium in Silverstone, finishing the season with a fairly decent 22 points, which was 22 points more than his teammate could score. You see what I mean now? Like, if I was trying to be negative of all the time about Harry Anto, I'd probably be able to make him sound like a fairly mediocre driver. But every time I go into the detail about his seasons, we end up finding out that he was actually at a disadvantage, and he did well to finish where he did. I mean, apart from last year. In all seriousness, these were the markings of a future Formula 1 driver. Harry Anto remained in GP2 for his third season in 2014, once again finding himself with the worst team on the grid, Caterham. 
yes, they competed in GP2 as well. You learn something new every day. For the second season in a row, Harry Hunter was the highest scoring driver in his team, although to be fair, this is a slightly unfair comparison to make given the fact that none of his three teammates took part in every race, instead choosing to play 200 mile an hour musical chairs with the second car. In terms of Harry Anto's own season, he picked up just the single podium in Monaco, but generally either didn't score points or didn't even finish the race, which wasn't ideal. In his fourth and final season in GP2, Rio Harianto finally managed to get himself into a half-decent team, which would obviously give him the opportunity to show what he could do. This half-decent team was Campos, who ran Harianto alongside another up-and-coming driver, Arthur Peake, with both drivers having had prior experience in GP2. Harianto started the season as he meant to go on, with a second-place finish in the feature race in Bahrain and then a win in the sprint race, putting him second in the standings behind Stoffel van Dorn going into round two. More solid points in Catalonia meant he was still firmly in the title hunt, and although Although Monaco was around to forget, he remained in touch with the championship leader all the way through to round 7 in Belgium, when he would pick up four back-to-back -back non-scoring finishes before picking up the pieces in the final three rounds of the season to finish fourth, with three wins and five podiums. This performance was finally enough for Harry Anto to make the move into Formula 1, seeing as he already held a super license thanks to that test day in 2012. The only issue with this was that Harry Anto was going to drive for Manor. Harry Anto started his season in arguably the worst way he could have done, crashing into Romain Grosjean in the pit lane during FP3 giving him a three-place grid penalty for the race. Not that it would matter, however, as he qualified on the final row of the grid anyway, albeit ahead of his teammate Pascal Verlein. He then went on to retire from the race on lap 18 thanks to a drivetrain issue, so all in all, it wasn't a dream start for him. The following round in Bahrain, Harianto did manage to finish the race, but he was still the last place car to finish, finishing a lap down from the leader, unsurprising. But again, he was in a manner, what do we expect? He didn't actually finish last in China, although he still failed to score points or beat his teammate, beating only Jolian Palmer in a race where every car finished. So it was an improvement, but it wasn't exactly a groundbreaking one. Round four of the 2016 season was held in Russia, and Harianto failed to convert his incredible qualifying position of 21st into an appearance in Sector 2, choosing instead to become the filling in a very expensive F1 car sandwich on the entry to Turn 2. So after four races, Harianto had finished out of the points in two of them and retired from the others, unsurprisingly leaving him bottom of the standings. Of course, the retirement in Australia could be blamed on the GP2 car that was the manor, but the Russian Grand Prix crash although not entirely Harry Anto's fault, couldn't. So while he probably wouldn't have scored a point in this race, he did put damage on the car, which of course required someone to pay money for the repairs to the car. Money that Manor already lacks, and money which Harry Anto's sponsorship situation couldn't really provide. However, that issue won't present itself for a few races yet, so let's continue with our story, shall we? In Spain, Harry Anto qualified bottom of the pack, two tenths back from his teammate, but almost four seconds off pole, indicating just how slow that Manor car was. He was again the last classified finish finishing again in 17th, one lap down from the eventual race winner, Max Verstappen. Heading into Monaco, Harianto claimed in an interview that Manor could be bringing a few surprises if it rained on race day. Now, it did rain on race day, and Manor did bring a few surprises. So Harianto scored his career best finish in the race, which was good, but for the second race on the trot, he was the last classified finisher. Four laps down. Four. Again, I feel the need to reiterate the fact that he was in the worst car on the grid by a country mile, and not to mention Harry Anto out-qualified his teammate at arguably the most driver-focused track on the calendar, but this wasn't quite the surprise that King Rio had promised us. He was again the last place finisher in the next two races in Canada and Baku, and heading into Austria, neither Harry Anto nor Verlein had scored a point for the team. Unusually, neither Manor qualified last for the Australian Grand Prix, with Pascal Verlein ending up 12th on the grid, and Harry Anto 19th. And now, you might be thinking, that's quite a big gap, right? And to be honest, so am I. Qualifying half a second back from your teammate in the track with the shortest lap time of the year is never a good thing, and it was made worse for Harry Anto by the fact that Verline scored points. Yeah, points. But our boy finished 16th, again the last driver to finish the race. This really brought to light the fact that Harry Anto didn't really stack up that well against his teammate, and when coupled with the fact that his funding from the Indonesian Sport Ministry was drying up, this signaled the beginning of the end for Rio Harry Anto's Formula 1 career. For what would turn out to be his last ever Formula Formula 1 race, Harry Anto retired after spinning off in the wet, bringing to end a rather short F1 career, which had at times shown some promise, but had more often than not been spent in the shadow of his teammate. So where is Rio Harry Anto now? Well, since leaving his F1 seat for Esteban Ocon, he remained to be a test driver for Manor for the remainder of the 2016 season, before the team folded and he was forced to find a new job. Things went pretty quiet for Harry Anto's career after his departure from Formula 1, and it took another two years for him to return to professional racing in the 2018 SIC 888 race at the Shanghai International Circuit, teaming up with two other Indonesian drivers, Anderson Tonoto and Andrew Harry Anto, to drive the Audi R8 LMS GT4. That's a long name. The team finished the race in fifth position, 
apparently. Like, seriously, I can't find a single word about the race anywhere online. And while there is a past live stream of it, it's eight hours long. And while I like making videos for you lot, I ain't gonna sit through eight hours of dodgy stream quality just to let you know how he did. So in 2019, Harry Anto competed in the Blancpain GT World Challenge Asia Series, finishing 13th, which wasn't very good. Again, we can't say that Harry Anto was entirely at fault here, as this series had to have at least two drivers per car, and Harry Anto's team chose to run three, the other two of whom don't even have a Wikipedia page, which is generally a marker of an irrelevant driver. Plus, Harry Anto scored every one of the team's 11 points, so in that sense, he's not really very different to one of my league racing teammates. That said, Harry Anto was still the only professional racing driver in his team, so if he didn't carry them, then I'd be worried. He once again competed in the GT World Challenge Asia Series between 2019 and 2019. 20, finishing a much better ninth in the driver's standings, even picking up a pole position. So all in all, I think it would be fair to say that although Rio Harianto was probably not good enough for Formula 1, he was still a decent driver, and he's actually been quite unlucky in his career. His teammates have either been too good for him, or they haven't been quick enough to offer him any sort of challenge. Ultimately, it's unlikely that even if Harianto was able to convince the government to keep paying for his career, he would have continued racing in 2017, as his performances didn't really scream F1 worthy to me. Again, that doesn't take away from the fact that he was in the worst car, so for him to finish anywhere other than last would have been an achievement. But there was still a clear gap in talent between him and Pascal Wehrlein, a driver who ended up losing his seat just one year later as well. I think Harry Anto seems like a decent guy as well, and he's clearly got some speed if he needs it. Of course he's not on the level of Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen, but why should he? He still holds the record of being the first Indonesian to reach Formula 1, and for that I think he deserves that recognition. Given the fact that Harry Anto's Wikipedia page hasn't been updated since early 2020, I'm assuming he hasn't done any professional racing since. And although there's no clear proof of this happening, a few of you have told me in the comments of my community post that he went to work for his dad's stationery business. So in a way, Rio Harianto's career was a sort of riches to rags one, with him starting out as this young, highly anticipated racing driver, and now he's a shop assistant. So to wrap up this video, let me just answer a few questions. Was Rio Harianto good enough to be a Formula 1 world champion? Nah. Was he good enough to deserve a seat in F1? Kind of. Was he really unlucky in his career? Definitely. Will he return to Formula 1 in the future? Probably not. But yeah, that's basically going to be it for this video, so I hope you enjoyed this slightly different way of making videos to my usual. If you did enjoy, then make sure to subscribe and hit that like button, but if you didn't, then let me know why in the comments. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you all later.